Hello. So my name is Chloe. You're on the Nail Text Coaches YouTube channel. This is a voiceover because I do make press on nails. And I do teach a lot of nail education. But I like to make the press on nails to watch on TV. So I got to do a voiceover with this. I didn't edit the video. So you're going to see even where I messed up. Well, I didn't mess up. I just did some stuff that I didn't like. So I went ahead and... Fixed it right on the video. I am using XL oval tips. I am going to create a press on set using my airbrush and different gel polishes. And the theme is going to be the Kansas City Chiefs, who just won Super Bowl 57. And they got the Vince Lombardi trophy. That's what everybody tells me that it's called. I will put the description for everything I use in the video below. Literally everything. So when I am doing my press on sets, I like to prep my tips by buffing them. I like to prep my tips by buffing them. I file the free edge and make sure there's not any sharp bits on there. I do wear gloves when I'm making them, mostly because I. you really should wear gloves when you're using gel polishes and things. I don't care what nobody says. You know why? Because it just shouldn't be getting on your skin. That's a surefire way to get contact dermatitis and then just be itchy and scratchy. I already have eczema anyway, so I don't want to exacerbate the situation. Exacerbate the situation. So I'm just gonna wear some gloves. I'm also allergic to latex, so I wear nitrile gloves. Yay me! Um, these, I have a separate set of files that I just use for press on nails. Like, they, they don't get used on people. They only get used on press on nails. Just because it always makes sure I have tools ready to get my press on sets done. And then also, I don't want to be cross-contaminated. You never know. You never know. You never know. I've been doing nails for nine, we're at 2024. I've been doing nails for 20 years at this point. Yes, it's the longest time I've ever done anything specific, but I've been doing this for 20 years. So, you know, you, you see a whole lot, and especially with the past pandemic -y stuff, it's just important to be, you know, working safe. So you see me here buffing all of my tips. This is just one of those OPI buffers. I actually have, like, the whole pack. It was, like, the buffer, two buffers, and three files. And so, since I had an extra one, I just kept that one just for my press on nails. And I go through all 10 uh, nails and do it. So, this is just going to be a medium set. And this is how I figure out what the medium set sizes are. I just go to Pinterest. And so, on Pinterest, it said if you're doing medium set press on nails, those sizes would be 1, 5, 4, 5, 8. So, I just grab two of each one and get them prepped up. Now, when I'm doing a medium set, like these little, it's not a custom set. It's just a ready to ship set. I'll just keep both hands the same. If I was doing a custom set, I would have mailed out to the client slash customer the measuring kits, right? And then they would just send me their sizes based on their um, fingers and which ones they try on and how well they fit. Now, I do want to say this. If you're considering getting custom press-ons, you do need to measure both hands. And you need to measure both hands because your hands are not the same size. And in fact, it's funny because I was telling one of my clients yesterday, she was like, oh, can you make my nails? We made her nails shorter. And then she was like, oh, well, can you make them more narrow? I said, I can make them narrow, but I can't make them unnaturally narrow for the simple fact it's going to cause breaking, right? And she wanted to keep her natural nail. Now, if we would have clipped that natural nail off and then just went ahead and sculpted it, the new set or whatever then i could have made them way more narrow but she likes keeping her natural nails despite the problems that it causes and so i'm like i can file it in but it's gonna look like a molar like a two short coffin nails or ballerina nails look like teeth like just open your mouth look in the mirror and look at a molar and you're gonna be like bro that's literally what i just filed Anyways, that was a tangent. My bad for the ADHD rant. But I do put all of my um, tips on the little stands. And since I'm not doing, like, it's not hand specific. Because all of these are the same sizes for both. 
If it was hand specific, I usually use the right side. I have right written on the tip stand and left written on the other one just so that when I put it in the packaging for the client, they'll know which hand is the right hand side of tips and which hand is the left hand, left hand side of tips. And why is that? Just so they don't have to fumble around with them. It's just a customer service thing, honestly, at this point. We're using Jellish Gel Polish here. Um, this is from the Whitney Houston Collection. Yes, they had a Whitney Houston Collection. And this gold is great. I'm actually going to do two coats of gold, but I'm still going to put a chrome on the top. So with the chrome, you could put it over black or you could put it over whatever color. So a lot of times I'll put it over the color. And especially because these tips are clear, I'm going to put it over the color. That way on the underside of the client's nails, of the press on nails, they can see like, oh, it's cute. It's gold. It's not just black, right? So I'm laying in my color here. And then this red is such a beautiful blue based red. Now, before we get on the video, before I started any application process, everything was shook, shook, shook up thoroughly. Shook? What am I? What am I doing? I You have to shake everything. You want to make sure you shake and mix the pigments in these different polish bottles or paint bottles correctly. That way you have a good application. And less of a chance of your client having a problem later because you made sure to shake everything correctly. So I'll do my two coats of color. We're going to cure it in between each coat. And then we're going to matte top coat it. This um, nudie, like flesh tony pink. I picked that one because I initially was like, I'm going to do a French a deep French with a red. And I liked it. But I didn't like the idea of a deep French with a red. And you'll see. Like I told you. Even though I did like a mess up in the video. I didn't really feel like it was messed up enough for me to edit it out. Because even when I'm doing like client nails. Sometimes you go with an idea. And then you see it out. And it's, it's not what you wanted. It's, it doesn't look how you wanted it to look. So, I just end up wiping it off. Here, I'm getting the second set ready. And you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to fast forward it for you. Um, but you can still see me painting. Okay? So, let's fast forward right now. now. Okay, so I fast forwarded through all of the polish application. Now, on some of the nails, you're going to see matte, and some of them are going to be shiny. On the shiny ones, I cured for two, uh, twice for 10 seconds so that I can chrome over the gold. Because Kansas City Chief colors are red and yellow, but I went with red and gold, right? And I wanted chrome on these nails because who doesn't want chrome? Now, on the matte top coated ones, they are matte top coated because I am going to airbrush with an acrylic airbrush paint over gel polish. So, using a matte top coat, I find works best for the gel polish and acrylic paint application. And I teach that in all my other courses as well. And if you roll through my other videos, you're going to see it here, even the ones on TikTok and the ones on Instagram. Now, over the mat, I mean over the mat, over the chrome, go ahead and matte top coat that one as well because I am going to airbrush on top of the chrome, which I love mixing mediums. I love switching the design up and thinking outside the box. So since I want to airbrush on top of the chrome, I will definitely have to matte top coat it. 
And I'm really just floating this matte top coat over the chrome. Like, I'm not trying to rub it in so hard or polish it on so hard that it scratches the, the, the chrome off of the nail. So this is the opposite hand. I'm doing the same thing. Once more. And then we're going to matte top coat. I am using the Koopa matte. I've had amazing results with the Koopa matte top coat. Love it. I do shake it in between, not in between, but like at the beginning of the application, I will shake it and really just roll it because I don't want a lot of air bubbles in there. Pop that in the lamp, give it a nice good cure for at least 30 seconds. I'm using a LED lamp from Sun One. I don't care what nobody say. Them Sun One lamps, top tier. Top tier. They are great. Okay, so bust out the stencil saver book. I'm going to take off the nails that I don't want to get any extra splatter on. Um, it's just something I like to do. That way I don't have to do a lot of cleanup. So you're going to see me doing French on the ones that I use that nudie color on. And honestly, I liked it, but I didn't like it. I should have mixed a little bit of purple in the red and a little bit of blue in the red. And then that way I would have got it to the same level of red that the other nails were actually painted. Now, I do not, nor have I ever, especially on clients, mix gel polish and acetone. It's not, uh, it's not good to do. So I don't do it. So I end up airbrushing these with the deep French stencil with the red and my first thought was marble on the nudes and I should have went with it. So we're going to fast forward me going through some foolishness. And then when we come back, you're going to be like, oh yeah, definitely, definitely marble is better. Okay. So let's hit it with a fast forward. Okay, I should probably do like a little outro music. Here is my Vince Lombardi trophy. Yeah, I just figured out what it was called. Um, stencil. Now, I make my own stencils. I like to use a silhouette, but some people like to use a Cricut. I'm going to put the link down below to show you how to, like, of course. Yes, I have a course. To show you how to make your own airbrush nail art stencils. Because I do sell airbrush nail art stencils in my store. But I do not sell anybody's proprietary logos. Right? Because I don't want to get sued. I haven't made a bajillion dollars yet. So I don't have the lawyers to fight it. I'm not interested in being sued. I I don't enjoy it. I don't feel like it's an activity that I'm going to want to, you know, engage in. So, yeah. Make your own airbrush stencils we'll put the link down to that in the bottom now i did the trophy gray and then a little white black right to make it look chrome because the trophy is actually silver chrome i've never seen it in person but you know they show you on the internet like how it looks so it's actually silver chrome so we first hit it with the outline of black and then actually I just added white to my handpiece and hit it with the white. Now when I'm doing my nail art, if I know I'm going to use a specific color for a number of different parts of the design, then guess what I do? I lay that color in wherever it is. Wherever it's going to be for any part of the design. That way I don't have to keep cleaning out the airbrush and i don't deep clean it every time i change colors i'll just run it through with another color but i think i said it before in the videos i like to work 
lightest to darkest since I already am using a darker color I'm gonna go ahead and use that darker color wherever else it needs to be done I found a silhouette of Kansas City and I wanted to put that on this thumbnail just one of the buildings I've never been to Kansas City so fingers crossed it really looks like this but I found a silhouette of Kansas City of course I made my own stencil and yeah, put that little piece under, right? I made my own stencil because I wanted the city and then I wanted the Kansas City Chiefs like logo over that. I don't know, you know, things come to mind and you just, you do it. So I just put a few of the buildings. I did the thumb because it was like the longest nail, the widest nail. And I was like, oh, okay, this will make it easier. That way we can see more of the city or more of the buildings. So if you're from Kansas City, uh, is that how it looks? Yeah, test it out a little bit. And then I never spray directly on my piece to start. I always start majority on the stencil. And then I wanted to like fade it out at the bottom. Not super, not a lot, but just, just a little bit. Give a little some some. And I didn't worry about the French on there because remember I told you the French one that's next to it. I ended up taking all of that off because I was like, mm -mm, that's not the look I was going for at all. And see, there we go. Now, if you're looking at the top of that stencil of where that stencil was, guess what I should have did? I should have put a little salvage piece at the top to make sure that I did not get paint on that edge that wasn't covered up by the stencil. But not a big deal. It's easily cleaned up with a little gel cleanse or you can use some acetone or just some regular alcohol. Mm, simple, easy peasy, lemon squeezy. I try to put my stuff in the stencil saver book like in some kind of order. Uh, so this was, I did Lions Nails. I'm actually from Detroit, so I have been a Detroit Lions fan forever. I've never been to a game, but I've been a fan forever. I never switched teams, even though I switched states. And so I was keeping all the football stuff together. Okay, so let's add the Casey. Looks like a spearhead. Yeah, Chiefs. The spearhead at the top. My luck. And so this is going to be white. Just so, you know, you can see it. And I still didn't go back to the trophy and add the highlights to it yet. So, we about to hit all of that at once. All of it at once. Okay, so. But this is what I'm going to do. So, I don't mess up everything else. I am going to put my finger covering the bottom part. Right? Because I don't want to get that white anywhere else but on that piece of stencil. Just a little, little bitty thin line. Like, when I tell you, cutting stencils has been so fun. Like the ones I sell in my store, fantastic. But if you don't want to buy them, you can make your own. So let me add the rest of the white to the trophy. Look at that peel. Look at that peel. It's so clean. It's so clean. And to the people that ask the question, like, how long does it take for the paint to dry? The paint is actually drying while you're spraying it out. Right? Right? So since it's drying while you're spraying it out, as long as you're not flooding the stencil with a whole bunch of paint, you should be good. Now, if you're like, oh, it's always dripping whenever I'm doing it, then you need to, you know, simmer down a little bit. You're pulling on that trigger way too hard and it's causing these problems. If you don't want these problems, what you're going to want to do is start soft. Start soft. You can always add a little bit more later, but it's never a problem. It's never a problem. Oh, you're doing too much or moving too fast, problem. Taking your time, not a problem. And for my note text, I want to add acrylic airbrush paint to their tool kit. Do it. It's safer. It's cleaner. It's an easy cleanup. It's a soap and water cleanup. Uh, do it. Do it. And then just charge by the minute for the nail art. Because a lot of times people were like, oh, I would never pay 5 or $7 per nail. And you didn't use three colors, 15 
crystals and this, that, and the third, and they don't want to pay five to seven dollars, and okay, but if you do a dollar per minute, guess what? It's about the same because it's going to take you five to seven minutes to work on that nail with those three different colors, which is a dollar per minute. So you end up getting your five to seven dollars per nail based on how you want to price. One of my other nail tech friends, she prices her stones per stone. And honestly, it's the best way to do it. She breaks down how much each one costs and then just charges per stone. I am getting everything that I need to airbrush white together, including this running football player. Whatever football player is like number one on the Chiefs team, uh, we'll just say that that's him. Why not? But I'm going to be real smart about it. And I am going to mask off where I don't want any white paint to get. And that's just taking some other stencil pieces and covering that up. That's it. Easy peasy. Lemon squeezy. We got white in there. We're going to start off slow. Start off soft. You see how light I'm spraying for that little first application? You see how light that is? That's how you need to start off when you're doing it. And quiet as it's kept, even if you're using a gel polishing acetone, which you should not be, when you go in too hot, it's still going to drip. It's still going to drip. This is not sped up in any way. Not this part. And look at this application peel. Boop. Boop. Starting off slow. Nice, solid, good coverage. So let's do the other stuff that needs to have white. I did the KC letters to go inside of the spearhead piece. And you see, I always use tweezers to handle my stencils. Why? Because I don't want to get any oils or paint on them that might be on my gloves. So I always try to use uh, tweezers to take my stencils off of the nail, off of the carrier sheet, off of the stencil saver book. Yeah. A little bitty piece stuck in there just because it's so tiny but I rarely handle the stencils with my actual ungloved finger because I don't want to get finger oils on it at all at all so go ahead uh, this this green stencil masking and you can see through it a little bit so that helped me make sure that I got it into the spear at just the right uh, angle or position. Press it down. Grab my airbrush. There we go. Soft. Look how soft. Because I'll do it for a little while. And not over flood the stencil with paint. Because you want to clean removal every time. See? See how it looks? That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. Expand it. Do full screen mode so you can see. Alright, so let's let's get the rest of the trophy together. I grabbed the gray. I did. I wanted a gray gray. Uh, this gray is from One Air. I'll put the links down to the paint. In the description box as well. So you can grab them if you like. I really love these paints. I'm going to add a little gray. See, it's quick. I had white in there first. That's why I said light is the darkest. I had white in there first. Add the gray. Not a big deal. Put my thumb there. Make sure. I don't get it everywhere. And you see how I'm spraying the gray and it's very light because I want to give the ideal of a chrome like type effect. And then I actually still will need to add a little bit more white because I want to, you know how if you're looking at something chrome, you got, got the lighter spots. Right here, I'm going to use Arrow Flash. Sometimes it's easy to get. Sometimes it's hard to get. You can get it off of Amazon. But every now and again, they be out because that one is so on Amazon in the U.S., but it's from Japan as well. So I think the seller every now and again just doesn't sell it. 
Now, I was getting it from the nail supply. Sometimes they have it. And then if I couldn't get it on Amazon, I couldn't get it there. Um, Arts Artorama and Utrex also was carrying it. But they had it on clearance more recently. So I haven't been able to get any more if like the um, nail supply doesn't have it. Okay, so let's get into it. We're going to add a little white highlight on a few areas. I don't know if you've ever seen that, that trophy. Like, I haven't seen it up close. That's not what I mean. I mean, if you've ever seen that trophy when they show it on TV, it's so shiny. And I don't know if it's like a new one every single time or if it's the same one and they pass it around like the Stanley Cup. See how that looks? Listen, watch this on full screen for real to get the full effect. I don't, I don't know how the Vince Lombardi trophy works. I don't know if like if it's if every player gets a mini one, if the team just keeps it. I don't know. I don't know. Okay, so on the NFL logo. This was uh, Super Bowl 57. When they had it on pictures, when they had it like flitting across the screen, it was a few colors. Right? So I made those letters. And I want to do them with the, it was purple and orange ombre. And then it had like white little flecks, like stars. So I'm like, yeah, on the bottom of the trophy, I'm doing it. I'm definitely doing that. I remember I still have white in my handpiece. So I'm going to place my stencil and then we're going to hop to uh, the white and we'll do the orange and then we'll do the purple because we do lightest to darkest. And I actually ended up cutting this in a few sizes because I wanted to get the, mm, I want it to be big enough to be seen. But not too big where it fell off. So you see me just using some salvage pieces here to mask off where I don't want to get any color at. Like where wherever you don't want overspray, go ahead, mask it off. Grab something else, mask it off. And this is over the Vince Lombardi trophy thumbnail. So hit it with white first. Full screen mode. Definitely important here. You see how soft I'm doing when I first start? That way you give it a time, a chance to dry. Okay, so these are the purples that I end up using. Purple and the orange. One is from Aeroflash, the other one is from One Air. Make sure you shake all your paints up and before you start spraying them. These are already shook off camera. Shook, shaking, yeah. Off camera and we're going to do the, the orange peachy color first. You see me just going side to side. It's very light. And we did white on a base because I'm using a pastel which has a white base. But I didn't want any chance where it wouldn't get solid enough and you would still have that gold shining through. So, hey. Add white base. It avoids the frustration. Now we're going to take that purple from Arrow Flash and add it in. Still very soft. Bring it down a little bit. Very soft. Now that I got my purple in, I'm going to go and add in the white little specks. I always test it on my hands first. So um, to make these little dots, it's basically just yanking back on the trigger real quick. I do have another airbrush that's got like a 
like an airflow no uh, nozzle nozzle uh, turner at the bottom. And so, of course, you can do it. And sometimes too much white might come out, like right there. But it wasn't bad. Only because it just made it look like it was a shiny lettering. So, I wasn't, like, mad, mad. But watch this peel. If you don't have it on full screen, just do it right now. Watch this. Watch this. Boom. Do you see what I'm talking about? Everything. Just everything. Okay, so now let's add in the Kansas City Chiefs lettering. And we're going to do it on another one of the gold chrome nails. Just got to wiggle it a little bit to remove it from the carrier sheet. And I ended up just putting it on the gold nail. I sprayed white on the bottom and then red. Just because that gold is so bold, I didn't want to have to like put too much red. Move the ones that could get a uh, back spray on them out of the way. Make your life easier. And which I really didn't even need to move these because I ended up um, taking, like I said, taking that French off earlier anyway. Well, let's use our thinking caps and let me use a piece of the salvage. Cut it in half. Move the other ones out of the way. I'm going to spray white first, then the red. And I just, I want, if you haven't zoomed in, zoom in now. Look at how soft I spray for each application, right? That way you, your dry time isn't like crazy long. And of course... In my 100% analytical mind fashion, I'm going to spray anything else that I need to be white, right, now. Because I have white currently in my handpiece. And, like, once you start getting, like, really good at it, I do all of this while my client is talking. I'm literally figuring out the design while my client is talking. I was super proud of this stencil. This is the NFL like logo piece. The only thing is I didn't do the blue. I could have did the blue background and I didn't do the blue background first. I just did it floating on the gold. And it's on oh it's on this other gray stencil masking that I use every now and again. I don't know why I had this one and I didn't do it in the green. In any case, salvage peaches, pieces are important when it comes to this part too. So you see me cutting a few. And then we're going to get it sprayed on there. Okay, so let's spray in the NFL logo with the white. And we're doing this now because I'm going to have to do red for the Kansas City Chiefs lettering. And then red for the NFL part. Um, over this logo piece they have like the letters NFL in that flag lower half of that flag I guess it is and so I wanted to make sure I put that in there I'm just going to reference one more time might be tired of hearing it but thin even coats goes a long way for a solid no mess no fuss application Okay, so we added our red to our hand piece. So we're going to go ahead and start off light. And this is also a very good indicator to see how light I sprayed to start. 
and I layer it in until I get the right application. I'm doing soft spurts. And then watch this peel. This stencil masking is really A1, but watch it. It's so clean. Y'all see that? You see that? Ooh. Fire. Okay, so let's do the NFL lettering. So switch. I don't even know why I'm putting these back on there because I'm going to get rid of this French. Like, seriously, I'm not keeping it. Okay, so the NFL lettering goes on after this. So I'm going to take off this little bit. The salvage pieces, put those in my stencil saver book. And then look how clean this peel is. Woo! I never get over it. Now I'm going to grab, see how good that looks, nice and clean. Now I'm going to grab the NFL lettering. See? And get it positioned real well. Okay, so let's pop the NFL logo on there because this also needs to be red. And like I've stated previously in the video, I I try to work in order. Like if I'm using red, what everything else that needs to be red. Let's do that now. If I'm using white, everything else that needs to be white, let's do that now. And the, the more you do it, the easier it'll get to do like um, layering application, you know, all of these things. And in fact, I have, yeah, that's a good idea. Okay. In fact, I have a airbrush paint starter course kind of to get your toes wet. I'm going to put the link to that down below as well, just in case you're like, mm, I don't know if I could do this. Let me explain to you. You can 100% do this. And I'm going to show you how. Look how clean that peel is. Ugh. These really came out so fantastic. I'm not even going to lie. Okay, so. Eh, I didn't like something about that. So I'm going to go ahead and wipe them off. It's just some acetone on this little lintless wipe so i'll wipe that off i'm gonna do something different on that one and then let me wipe off the french because like i said before i didn't like it i didn't like it i'm gonna do a marble on that and i got this cool marbling brush so i'm gonna wipe the french off of all of them because i don't want it Okay, so here we are. I don't know why I grabbed him with the other, made out of the other stencil material. This one is, I'll put it down, the gray stencil material, 651, I think. Anyways, so I still had red in my handpiece, and I was like, oh, let me go through and just spray him red real quick on the chrome nail. And this is, I'm starting off light, but do you see how... It really is still giving me very much, I can see the chrome below it. It's not like that Chiefs uh, lettering that I did where I did the white first. So something was like, mm -mm, you got to do better than this, Chloe. You cannot finish the set out like this. So ran a little cleanser through and then added some whites in the handpiece. And there we go. Shake it up, shake it up, shake it up, shake it up. And even though I'm going to spray it, it's going to be kind of pink. I'm still going to go over it with the red. Put my finger up there. Let me get back in frame. I put my finger up there just because I didn't mask off the whole nail, right? So hit it. 
with the pinkish whitish. And then I have a helmet stencil that I'm going to go ahead and add to this as well. There it is. Place that guy down just at an angle. So spray, airbrush him white. All right. Nice and easy. It's such a clean removal. And I've used this stencil a few times because I did some Detroit Lions nails when they were in the playoffs. Because uh, I was really hoping for the Lions and the Ravens, right? But, you know, maybe next year. I keep trying to use this football stencil. I just... Mm -mm. I just don't like it. So I put it down there. Took it off. I, I just didn't want that. I didn't. Here's all the stuff that I ended up cutting. Um, Yeah, it was a lot. Like, So let's jump to like finishing out. That is a base coat or foundation by Jellish. In order to keep your acrylic airbrush paint designs from chipping when your client's wearing it, you need to base coat the design first. Now, I do file or buff the little side walls and the free edge to make sure there's no um, airbrush paint on there. But then after that, I coat it with a base coat over the application. Now, this is done because the acrylic airbrush paint dries chalky right so think of natural nail it dries basically like a prepped natural nail and you couldn't just go in straight with color or you couldn't go in straight with a tack free top coat and it not chip or bubble and fall off so what you do in that same fashion is over your nail art design that's done with acrylic airbrush paint and on top of a matte gel polish top coat you're going to base coat, then cure. This will keep it from chipping. This will keep it from chipping. So I go over all of the nails that have acrylic airbrush paint designs on them with a base coat. And I just cure it for 10 seconds like the manufacturer suggests. You cure a base coat. Because I do not want my designs chipping. Now, at this point, everything is dry. Uh, it can still get scratched. So, if you are using an old bottle of base coat and it ain't a whole bunch in there, that little base part of the brush before the bristles, like, fully come out can actually scratch the design up. So, I'm, I'm trying to be very generous with my uh, base coat application. So, I'm going to fast forward through this part. No, no, no. I'm not going to fast forward. I'm going to... Cut to the last part where we're almost done and we do the marble. Okay, so let's prep for our marble. I need my glass palette. This is from the I Want to Dance collection from Jellish. They have like a Whitney Houston collection. Yes, I talked about that earlier. This is a gold. It's actually very nice. And they came with a, it was a gel polish and it came with a regular nail polish. And the red. And I think I ended up adding white. But you pretty much put all of them onto a palette. And then here I'm using the Gotti White. Which actually this is a very nice white. I need to go get the black too. Because this white is super. Like you can gel paint with it. And you can paint with it. Like if you wanted to do designs and stuff. You can do it with this. This is Blooming Gel from Jellish. I'm going to put that over my Nudie Nail. And then this brush, it's got like a divot in it. It's from Robloff. Mm, I think that's how you say it. Of course, I'll place that down below. So you pretty much seesaw and add the colors on each side. And then drag it through your blooming gel. And let it do its work. And then while I'm just letting it spread. And I'm going to grab the other one out of the way.
Put that in the lap and cure that for the full uh, 30 seconds in the LED. And let's get to these other two. And I'm not putting a ton. I don't want it pooling on there. So just a nice thin coat. It's not too much. It's just enough. You can tell by how I'm smashing the brushes, the brush down that I get just enough on there. And I'm going to do this one to a different diagonal. Add a little bit at the bottom. Sometimes if it's not enough of one color, I go and add it back. I need a little bit more gold. I'm finding the Bloomin' Gel works way better with gel polishes than gel paints. But this Yo Gotti gel, it, it still did real good. Like it was thick and thin enough. So just add a little bit more. I like that. I like that real good. So I'm going to pop that in the lamp to cure it. Okay, so this is my one of my favorite top coats from Express Claws. It's called Lush Shine. Everything that needed to be base coated is base coated and cured. So let's do our top coat over everything. Woo! It's a really nice top coat. It stays shiny. I love me a good shiny top coat. And it's not crazy expensive. So we're going to top coat everything. And then we're going to fast forward and see the final look. Okay, so here we are. Look how cool they came out. Look at all the dimension we created with the airbrush, even though it's tiny. Like, come on. This is such a good look. All right, I'm going to try to do more videos, but if you want to see something special, comment below.